This is not the strangest thing I've done with a Raspberry Pi, but it might be the most unsupported. Like, literally, I'm not sure this card's gonna stay connected if I hold it too long. But let me tell you how I built a 55 tops Pi AI PC. That's more than the tops in the latest AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, or Apple processor, but it's spread over a bunch of chips, so it's not exactly the same thing. And I could add more. I mean, there's still six more slots I could use if I pop out the extra SSD and Wi-Fi chips. But what is this thing? Why did I build it? And does it even work? After my last video on the main channel, I left everyone hanging. It turns out it wasn't a power issue preventing me from using this pile of madness. It was a PCI Express issue. But that pile of boards on the desk was scaring me a little bit, so I decided to switch gears and use this instead. On the bottom, there's a Raspberry Pi 5 with Pineboard's UPCITY or Up City or UPI City or something like that. It's basically a little PCI Express slot on top of the Pi and it has an extra 12 volt power supply so that it can power the board independently of the Pi because the little cable connector on the Pi only supplies up to five watts and we need at least like seven to 10 watts to power all these things, probably a lot more if they're all under load. Uh, on top of that, there's a PCI Express card that most people have never seen before. It's the Alftel PCI Express 12 slot expansion board and uh, this is a kind of rare board. It was made for a short time and I don't think they make it anymore. It's not on their uh, crowd supply page anymore, but it has down in the left corner a PEX8619 switch. That switch is from Broadcom and it, and it expands the one lane of PCI Express Gen 2 on the Pi into 12 lanes of PCI Express Gen 2, which has some caveats, but it works if you are using, you know, half of the bandwidth uh, on a couple devices at, at the same time. Uh, but on that Alftel board, I put two dual edge TPUs, but on this board only one of those TPUs on each of these chips works because only one PCI Express lane is connected to each of these slots. Uh, so half of that is wasted on those two. Then I have two Coral TPUs that are just one TPU on each, and in total I have 16 tops of Coral TPUs. Then I have a Halo 8L, that's the one that I got in the Raspberry Pi AI kit, and that has 13 tops of neural compute. Then there's a Halo 8 that has 26 tops of neural compute. And all of that stuff is plugged into this uh, 12 volt power supply that I'm monitoring through Third Reality's smart outlet. It's a Zigbee outlet that I have wired up to Home Assistant and it's showing that it uses about eight watts at idle just for the PCI Express board. So there probably would be power issues as well if I tried using the configuration that I was using uh, in the other video. Uh, but a lot of people ask me about this setup. It's basically I have a Home Assistant dashboard for power monitoring and I have a bunch of these third reality outlets. So if you want to know more about that, maybe I'll make a video on how I do that. Uh, but the big question is that I've been hearing after I posted a picture of this thing to social media is, does it actually work? And uh, the first time I booted it up, I installed the Halo software and uh, followed the guide on the Raspberry Pi uh, documentation but I had an error message. It said, failed to enable MSI. So that's the same error message I had in that other video. And so I, I put that on hold and I decided to switch tracks and try getting the Coral TPUs working because Midnight Link on my Pi PCI Express uh, repo posted a really detailed guide to getting the Coral TPUs working with uh, Pi OS 12 Bookworm, which was hard to do before. What I did before was I installed an old version of Pi OS because Google doesn't really support the software for the Coral that much. Uh, but using the instructions from Midnight Link, I could get the driver running on Bookworm pretty easily. It does involve uh, building your own driver from source for it, so it's not the most easy thing to keep going. Um, but, you know, it, it, it works, and uh, that's a good starting point, getting something working, and then you can improve the process later. At one point during the process, you have to add in this Pineboard's Hat AI overlay. It's a DT overlay for the Pi that tells it how to use certain hardware. And I restarted it to get the corals working, and I noticed all of a sudden the halo was working. It didn't have that message, the error message anymore. So that was kind of odd, but before I got back to the halo, I wanted to see if the coral would actually work, and what do you know? <laughs> actually did. And uh, throughout this process, I also learned about a cool project called codeproject.ai, which is kind of like a, a web GUI for AI tasks. So it was a, a neat thing to see there. And uh, thanks again to Midnight Link for uh, making me aware of it and also giving these instructions. Uh, but that was good. And the, the only problem is that that software, I think, only is geared towards working with one Coral TPU, or if you have a dual TPU, it can work with the, the two, but it can't work with like multiple cards at least not yet. 
so if you have multiple cards, you'd have to have multiple instances running, so your Pi would be a little bit more overloaded. Uh, but I did get the one Coral TPU working and recognized, so I knew that the Coral stuff was working. And uh, I wanted to see if the Halo would work now, because it didn't have that error message. So the first time I tried, I, I forgot to plug in a camera. So I plugged in a camera after I rebooted, and uh, you can forgive the camera shake. It's kind of hard to hold these teeny tiny little Pi cameras. Uh, and I didn't have my tripod out anymore. I put that away. Uh, but the Halo was running inference just fine too. So both the Coral and the Halo were working great. The, the YOLO model still likes to identify pretty much anything that's rectangular as a cell phone, but it's running just fine. Um, but now, at this point, I have four Coral TPUs and two Halos available on the Pi. That's 55 tops of available neural compute power. And technically, I have 63 tops of hardware, but like I said, two of those NPUs aren't connected on this Alftel board, at least. I posted an issue to the Raspberry Pi Linux repo um, about the, the overlay thing, and it looks like there's actually another overlay that fixes this problem, too, the PCI X1 Compat Pi 5 overlay that kind of says uh, switch things into a compatibility mode for 32-bit accesses and things. Some of it's a little bit over my head with how, how the PCI Express bus works, but basically, when you're behind a switch, some things act a little differently on the Pi 5. So this kind of fixes that up. Uh, I think the bottom line here is this ridiculous thing works, but works is a funny word there. To use all of those TPUs and NPUs together, you'd need to make software that supports it all. Uh, and I, I like to think of this kind of like multi-core support, like 15 or 20 years ago, back when like the Intel Core 2 Duo came out, those kind of things. Most software still assumed that there was just one core, you know, one, one CPU and, and one thing available. Multiprocessing was always kind of a hard task until it became so prevalent that all software, well, most software, uh, assumes, oh, you, you could have one core, you could have 10 cores, you could have 100 cores. Uh, and we still run into bugs. Like when I was running my 128-core Ampere Ultra, it, it had, I don't know, uh, 64 cores in some software would work, like Cinebench. Uh, it, they just never assume that you have 128 or 512 or 1,000 cores on a, on a single system. Uh, but that's becoming a possibility these days. So, uh, but it's taken a long time to get there. It's the same thing with NPUs. Uh, nobody assumes that you have like 25 corals or something, because that's just ridiculous. Um, and there's still more space on this board too. I, I, if I got all Halo 8s, which has 23 or 26 tops, I could hit 200 or 300 tops hardware-wise but everything would still be limited by that software support and be limited by having one PCI Express Gen 2 lane back to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but anyway, I'd say for now, <laughs> I don't recommend that you do what I did. I recommend you stick with one or two devices. Like uh, there are some hats that allow you to have the uh, AI NPU and an NVMe SSD. So that'd be great for something like Frigate. Uh, but it's still fun to tinker and I will continue tinkering and doing the ridiculous things that I do, because sometimes you find a good use case out of it, other times you don't, but it's always fun either way. And uh, for the, the tribute at the end of this video, I will say, and I will see you in the next one.